Okay, today I'm going to be installing the Ring Spotlight Cam Mount. So this is the hardwired version. So I am going to be hardwiring this into the house today. Okay, that is pretty cool. So it does just have three leads coming out. Nothing too complicated here. It's actually a little heavier than I was expecting. That's kind of nice. That's cool. So it's actually a fully colored instruction booklet. We have a weather seal for a square box and a weather seal for a round work box. Oh, got two of them. I guess if you want to double it up. Then we got our square work box and this one actually has the uh, second one on there as well. We got another one. So that's cool. Depending on how you want to actually mount the thing. Wow, nice. So they, wow, they really include everything. So we got wire nuts, all kinds of different screws. And we've got a hanging hook to hold the thing up while we're wiring it in, so that's really cool. So we got number six, number eight, number ten washers and nuts. <laughs> Look at that! It comes with the right drill bit, and this is a masonry bit, so you can go into stucco with that, no problem. And then the little screwdriver. Wow, that's that's amazing. It's actually got literally everything. Okay, cool. So that's what we're dealing with. It looks like somebody already tried to install one here and you know probably did, but then they just took the wires out and not really sure what they did with it. So this is gonna be where I'm gonna be installing it. It's mostly just to cover all this up. And if we go on the other side of the wall, so this is the other side and you can see my tripod right there. So it's gonna be right around here somewhere. And right below that is the electrical outlet. So I'm gonna try to tap the power from here and pull it on the other side. The first thing to do is shut off the breaker. So I'm just gonna test it. This is a GFCI tester. And I just wanna make sure we got no power. So zero volts, we got no power there, and we got no power there. And this is a thing that's going to happen sometimes is that usually they get painted around, so you have to break that seal. And if you try to just pry it off, you could actually rip some of the paint up around it. So let's take a razor, kind of go around. And then it should pop off. And these square bits are so much nicer than the uh, the flatheads. So there's two whites and two blacks. That means that there's a wire coming in and then a wire going out. Now the temptation here is always just to feed a wire in, attach it, and call it a day. But the problem with that is you're only allowed eight wires in a box. If you also put an outlet or a receptacle or something else in there, you can have six wires. And that's wires, not cables. So if we have two sets of Rumex coming in, that's three wires each, a total of six wires coming in. So we are already maxed out, which means that the only way to do this properly is to increase the size. Now that's actually okay, and that's gonna work perfectly for this because the only way to really stab the wires into the back of the box is if I cut out a hole right here so that I can actually push it in through the back. Now, since I'm gonna be increasing the size of the box, I can cut this out a little bit, pull that box out, and I'll have more access and then I can put it in a bigger box. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find out where the stud is. Is it on this side or is it on this side? Because these boxes are always gonna be attached to a stud. So this is the best stud find I've ever used. This is a T13. And so the stud is right here. So when I cut this, I need to cut out this side. So this is the box I'm gonna be installing, and it is going to be installing right about here. This stud finder even has a little pencil. I'm gonna put this on, and this even has a little bubble level on it. I'm gonna make sure that we're straight, and I'm gonna mark down the side. So now I'm gonna take my oscillating tool, and I can either cut it out like this freehand, but I've got a better thing. And you don't need this, but I have it, so I'm gonna be using it. It makes life a lot easier. This is a cubit. So this helps to cut nice perfect squares. This can get kind of messy so it can be beneficial to get some kind of a containment going on. And this is gaffer tape so you can pull it right back off without causing any damage. So I got it started. I'm going to use this to finish it off. And you want to try not to go too deep just on the account that there might be something behind it. There we go. So now I have to get this box out. And these are usually nailed in. So I'm putting this between the box and the stud, and I'm just going to pull it out. There 
go. So when we put the new box in, we want to make sure that we do not have this insulation here. So we're going to have to cut this part out. So it is worth keeping in mind that the best way to tackle this at this point is to cut a big hole in the drywall and then just feed the wire through straight down. I don't like dealing with drywall, so I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm going to be trying to pull it down. Now, there's a lot of things you have to take into account if you're going to be doing it this way. So, for example, are there fire blocks, which would be a 2x4 that would be sitting this way, which you might have to drill through. And the only way to really deal with that is to use a super long drill bit that you would come in through the top or through the bottom. Uh, or the alternative is also just to cut a hole in the drywall. But that is the correct way to do it, and the main reason is because of staples. So I cannot staple the wire to the stud the way that you're supposed to if I don't cut the hole in the drywall. You're supposed to staple the wire to the wall so that it doesn't have any chance of falling back. And if you have that in the center of the stud and somebody is screwing something like a picture into the wall they're not going to have any chance of hitting that wire so this is actually very important but if you call an electrician out to your house chances are they're not going to be doing this they're going to be doing exactly what i'm going to be doing today we also have to be very careful of things like this this is a nail that was punched into the wall and then painted over on the other side of that is a sharp point and if we pull the wire and drag it across that it could tear up that wire so we want to make sure we remove that before we proceed. And there could be countless other ones in the wall that you can't see, but any ones that you can see, you should pull those out. And then we can just take some DAP dry decks. This is easy mode spackle. Pop the lid. You can see how pink it is. I'm just gonna take just a pinch of this. I'm gonna mash it into that hole. Here, a little more than that. And this is gonna dry white, so when we come back to this later, we won't even be able to tell that it was there. So the next thing is, I need to find out if we have to drill into a stud next to it to wrap the wire up. I know I got a stud at about 12 inches, and I got another one at about 27 inches. And this wall is about five inches thick, so we'll check that against the door. There's about three quarters of an inch to the molding. So five inches puts me just to the edge of this frame, and then there's another, it's so like half an inch to the stucco. And then 27's over here, so we are definitely between those two studs. So I can just put that wire in and run it straight down. So there's a couple ways to do this. First way is I could get a fiberglass rod, like a glow rod, and just shove that in and then kind of bend it down and shove it down the wall. There is a chance if I do that, that I can mess up the insulation, like I could push the insulation down the wall. I really don't want to do that. Now, if you don't have this hole, you can literally just drill a hole. This is stucco, so this is Portland cement. I can stick my finger in and I don't feel anything except for the insulation. So they drilled all the way through the cement, through the foam, and then through the wood on the other side. And if you do that, you do need something that can drill through cement. So you would need something like a carbide or a diamond tip blade to actually cut through the cement. And you would also need to be careful of this wire. This is lath. So you would drill until you hit that, then you would snip the wire and then continue drilling through. So I was looking a little closer and what I noticed was that the insulation is actually kind of pushed around already. So what I was worried about were if I used a glow rod, it could push the insulation down. I'm not really too worried about that now. So these are glow rods. They're stiff, but they're also somewhat flexible. I've got this leader on the front of it. I'm going to try to just push that against the drywall and then scoot it down on the other side of the insulation. All right, that feels pretty good. So we can see this side is threaded. So I'm just going to take another glow rod Thread it right on and continue pushing it down. Okay, so I hit the ground there. So now we're going to dig in, and insulation can affect different people in different ways, so uh, I'm using gloves. But you can see we got the stick right here. There we go. Okay, so that's how we're gonna be pulling the wire up. So this is 12-2 Romex by Southwire. This is 12-2 UFB by Southwire. They're very similar, but they're also very different. Most of the time, people wanna use 12-2 Romex. The problem is that if any moisture gets inside of it, the jacket on here can actually wick up water. And if you get water inside of here, then you got a real problem. So this is UFB. This is actually designed for direct burial. So you can put this underground. You don't have to worry as much about water. It's a little bit harder to work with, which is why most people don't use it or because they don't know about it. But this is a much 
much better wire to use. So 12.2 means it's got 12 gauge wire, which it has to be 12 gauge wire because it's using a 20 amp breaker. And we've got 12 gauge wire all up in here. And you can tell because the jacket is yellow. So the biggest difference between this and Romex is that this insulates every wire independently. So that's why it's a little bit more difficult to work with. So to feed this into the leader, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to snip off part of the other two wires. There we go. And I have just the ground exposed. I'm going to slip that through the leader and bend it back. So that way it is connected. And I'm going to use Scotch Super 88. This is like Super 33, but it's a little bit thicker. My main goal here is just to make sure that there's no edges that are going to get cut on anything. Right. So that looks pretty good. Now if I start pulling the wire up like this, it's going to coil up into a spiral. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to straighten it out and I'm going to pull out as much as I need to run up this wall. So I'm going to be pulling this from the top and it's usually best to have somebody back here helping to feed it through and making sure it doesn't get snagged on anything. But I'm going to try to do this el solo today. So I only really need about six inches uh, plus the, the depth of the box. So I'm going to give myself a little bit extra and I'll stop right there. So for this I'm going to be using a surface mount box. So this is a box that's going to sit on top of the surface. So this is a flush mount. If I wanted to, theoretically I could just take this off, mount it right here. But I want to put it here, so I'm going to be using a surface mount box. I could have cut this hole out much bigger, made it a flush mount, and that would have been perfectly fine. But this is what I'm going with. Now this one's square. And this one's round. So I got square and round, and the camera came with both square and round covers for them. Now, no matter what, this has to be pointing down. So if I wanted to mount the box, the square box like that, I could do that with this, or I could mount it up and down and use this one, or I could use the round box and mount it like this. Now, to cover this area, I'm just going to use the round box. And plus, it'll look a little nicer. And on top of that, if I want to mount a light fixture here in the future, I can do that because they're all designed for round boxes. On the other hand, if I wanted to mount an outlet here in the future, then I would want a square box. Now, these are both weather proof boxes you can see that they both say wet location on here so this is okay for outside if it did not say that you could not use this outside and there is a difference between a wet location and a damp location this is considered damp because I do have a ceiling above me so this is covered now, either way you have to have a wet location suitable box these are both plastic and I can't use that because I'm going to be using this so this is a ceiling connector so this will fit over the wire and it will seal the box from the back. But because this is metal, I have to use a metal box. So this is the same basic thing, except it's metal. This one's die cast aluminum, but it also says suitable for wet locations. So this is usable. And you can see on this how it's slotted. That's very important. You can't just use a regular round grommet if you're gonna be doing this. It has to be slotted, that's why I'm using this one. And the reason you can't use a round grommet is because this cable is flat. So it needs to be able to seal up properly inside of here. There's gonna be some extra parts in here. So we got covers and we got a ground screw. And I do like this one because it's white, so that's gonna match the camera a little bit better. First, you have to screw this in the back, and these are half inch holes, and this is a half inch gland. And by half inch, I mean half inch NPT. So that's actually bigger than half of an inch, but it's half an inch on the inside. That's why they call it half inch. So we need to seal all the holes, so that's why they provide these plugs. I'm just gonna take these and spin them down. also has a hex driver so I can use that for this screw and screw that into the uh, the ground screw hole and this is aluminum so you don't really want to go crazy with it because you don't want to strip it out straighten this for now take this apart just to make it a little easier the nut on first make sure you put it going the correct direction I'll put on the seal and then I can run that through and I can kind of fit it all back together and I like to have everything kind of pointing upwards so you can see that all the lettering inside there is facing up I'm gonna tighten up that nut on the back just to make a good seal 
and you don't have to go crazy with it. So I'm just doing a dry fit right now. It will fit. And if this hole wasn't big enough, I would have had to drill that thing out a little bit more, but I already checked that gland to make sure and it does fit. So because I'm going into stucco, I'm going to use these. These are tap cons. I don't really have to use tap cons. These are designed for going into cement, and this is actually much softer on my house. I wouldn't have to worry about it, but for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and use it. The nice thing about tap cons is that they come with the masonry bit that you need, so this is the perfect size. Now you can guesstimate and hope that you're making this level, but I don't like to guesstimate because sometimes you'll put it on and it looks good, but then when you stand back, it'll be crooked. And then I can throw this level on there. And when I drill in, I'm just gonna be drilling in just through the stucco. And for masonry bits, you wanna use a hammer drill. This is a hammer drill. And this is an eighth inch drill. I'm gonna use that to go through the wood behind the stucco. So this is called duct seal, and this is nice. It's kind of like a putty or a Play-Doh or whatever. What's nice about it is it does not harden, so it stays soft, so if I need to, I can pull this thing off without destroying anything. Now pull it apart. Take off a chunk. If you want there to be enough to seal all the little cracks behind it, you don't want it to be squeezing out the sides. And the important thing with this is we don't want to seal all the way around it. We just want to go up the side, the top, and then the side. If there does develop any water behind it, it needs to have a way to drain out. So we're going to go kind of like that. Just like that. I'm going to add a little Dynaflex 230. This is caulk. I'm going to put that in these holes just so that they are sealed as well. And this is clear. It goes on white, but it will become clear. You don't need to really torque it down, even though I just did. Okay, so that's on. The cool thing about this is I can just kind of wind this wire up in here now. And I can throw this plate on here. I can come back to it whenever I want. And even later on down the road, if I want to take this camera off, I can throw this on there, and it'll be ready for whatever anybody wants to put on. And this is also a weatherproof cover, just in case we get any rain while I'm inside. The first thing I want to do is make room for the box. So I'm just going to cut out insulation. And the reason I'm cutting it is because if you just try to like mash it over to the side, you could end up uh, mashing the top and bottom as well. That's not something you want to do. So you want to cut out room for the box. So I'm going to give myself a little extra room here. So this box has screws that are going to screw into the inside. I always prefer using boxes that actually attach to the stud instead of using old work boxes that kind of like snap into the front. First I need to feed these wires through. Just making room for those wires. Got that just like they had it. And I want to try to pull it until I get the insulation into the box. There we go. Okay. Try to get everything squared up. So now to strip the UFB. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to score about a half an inch down all the conductors. And I should be able to grab each one and pull it through the jacket. Okay. 
So because this is an exterior wall, if there is any kind of air coming into the wall, it could actually pass through the outside of this box. So to prevent that, I'm gonna use some fire block foam and I'm gonna pass that around the outside. I have seen people put it on the inside, but you're definitely not supposed to, that's against code, but we can put this on the outside. You do wanna wear gloves if you're gonna be doing this. And this stuff does expand by about 200%, so you don't wanna get carried away with it. And we don't want it to be covering up any of these holes. We just want just enough to stop any draft. We want to hold it upside down, and when I pull the trigger, you'll be able to see it start to come out of the nozzle. Just like that. It will become quite a bit of a mess very quickly. Okay, so we're kind of sealed up. This will become non-tacky in about five minutes. And if you want to fully cure, it'll take a day. So they got the grounds tied together with a copper bonding crimp. I'm gonna attempt to make these all about the same length. I want it to stick out about six inches. And put all my grounds together. I'm gonna twist those up. I want that to be a super good bond. And then I'm gonna trim this. So both of my short wires are about the same length. And then I'm gonna use a greenie. It's a wire nut with a hole in the top. See that? So I can poke the wire through the end and then I can twist this onto the back. And I can twist this on to all those conductors at the back so that they are locked together. Now, since this is going to the outside, I wanna make this a GFCI. So this is a 20 amp. GFCI. This is by Leviton. These are my favorite. Unscrew the ground screw. I think I'm gonna cut this back to a point where it's a little bit cleaner. It's a little plate and it just sits behind that plate and then we tighten it up. Okay so here we've got the line and here we've got the load. So we're going to attach the wires that are going up to the camera to the load. That way they're going to be GFCI protected so if for whatever reason some water gets in there it's going to be GFCI protected. So all of these wires that were existing are going into the line and then these two wires for the camera are going into the load. So we got silver on this side and gold on this side. So the black goes to the gold and the white goes to the silver. I'll trim these down just a bit. And then tighten them down. Do the same thing over here. So we are currently wired in the same way that we were. And this is from the camera. So I'm going to strip these back. this into the load side, tighten it down, and tighten that down. Want everything nice and tight. It's going to bend everything down. Just keep on doing that until we got our outlet in. And this outlet does come with a wall plate, but as you can tell, it's not gonna work. So what we have here is a one outlet, two gang plate. I'm gonna have to come back and do a little paint touch up, but this will work for now. One idea I was playing around with was I was thinking about putting a switch on this side, and I was gonna go from the load to the switch to the camera. So if I ever want to turn the camera off, I just come in here and hit the switch. 
So on the ring, this locks, so I can just take this ring, and spin it, and this will come right off. Before I do that, I'm going to take off this locking nut, and I'm going to fit this so that we'll face down, just to make sure I got the orientation correct. So now I can fit the locking ring back on. As I know that this is what I'm going to be using, and it should be in this orientation. Just about a half an inch in on every conductor, because I'm going to be cutting all that off. And I want to try to get that back about as far as I can. And you only want to grab it at the tip. You don't want to grab it again here because uh, you could damage that insulation. That off. And I'll cut all these to about six inches. So that's, put your hand on it, stick your thumb out, and that's approximately where you want it. So the ground is going to go on the ground screw. You always want to wrap that clockwise. There we go. This, that's been tinned over, I want that bare wire to be about the same as this. So before I connect this, a couple of these wire nuts on, just to make sure that nothing happens out here. Turn the power back on. Okay, so we got a green light, so it's on. All right, I'm reading 120 volts. And it was a 0 0.08 second reset. So that is excellent. I'm going to reset that again. Check the top one. 0 0.07 second reset. All right, so we are good. Power off again. So the red isn't going to do anything. That is just to control other lights, but we're not going to be using that. We want to twist these wires together. Wire nut on. And that little hook that they provided, you could hook that into here and lay it on there, but I mean, this isn't that heavy. It's starting to get dark out. And I'll tie those together. And you want to go all the way down until it's past the insulation. If you can't get it past the insulation, you take the wire nut off, you cut it so it's a little shorter, and then try it again. All right, so we are there. So now we're just gonna shove all these in. You wanna make sure that when we put this plate on that we're not gonna be pinching anything. And then we got these washers and all these bolts. So whichever size work box you have, you'll have a bolt for it. So I'm gonna use a bolt, and then a metal washer, and then a rubber washer. So it looks something like that, and that's gonna help make that seal. Nothing pinching. We want this to be on here tight enough to make a seal, but we don't really, we don't need to crush it. It's got that rubber on the back for a reason. Okay, and I'm just going to put in those security screws. And so that is going to prevent that mount from accidentally spinning out. There we go. Let's see how we did. Power on. And there we go. Fancy. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Play Store. And we're going to get the Ring app. Okay, open. All right, so I set that up. Okay, so I linked Ring and my Amazon account. So this is all one thing now, that's good. So security camera. It wants me to scan the barcode. Okay, so this is gonna be in the front, so I'll hit front. I've already installed it. 
Now I'm looking for a flashing light on the camera and that is flashing. So we are ready for setup. So now we're setting up to our Wi-Fi. All right, cool. Cool, so it's set up. So now I'm telling it an email from my girlfriend so that she'll have access to it as well. I think we'll just leave it at the default. Oh, that's nice. So I can completely cut out the uh, the neighbor to make sure that if if anybody's out there, they're not going to be getting bothered by it. Cool. And we can refine that at any time. Neat. Cool. So that is the, uh, that's the camera. Not too bad. And if I want to turn the lights off, just hit that. Choop. No more lights. And I'm in live view. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Pretty cool. So I can talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> New motion at the front door. So yeah, honestly, that wasn't too bad. There it is. Great stuff. Alexa, show me the front. Okay. Cool. Just like that. So the thing to keep in mind if you're going to be doing this is that that outlet, if you decide to do this, then that outlet is your responsibility as long as it's in use. So even if you sell the house and then the person that bought it sells the house and it keeps on going like that for forever, at any point, if that outlet causes a problem or that wire or that camera, anything in there, anything that you did is your fault. So that's the main reason to hire an electrician is because they're insured. Even if they take a bunch of shortcuts and they know what they're doing and they make a mistake, if they do something that burns your house down, it's their fault, their insurance has to cover it. So if there's any reason to get an electrician, that's the reason.